I've told you before in other circumstances that sometimes when I'm teaching, I like to teach you the wrong way to do something as a way of illustrating the right way to do something. Now, there's something very important that I need to tell you about correlation. I didn't do anything wrong, but I was not careful enough in my explanation. You see, when I was talking about things like as temperature goes up, the sales of hot chocolate go down and the sales of cold soda go up, I left the impression that one variable was causing the other. And in this specific situation, I think it would be fair to say that temperature does cause a change in sales. However, correlation does not imply causation. While two variables may be causally linked, just because they're correlated does not mean that one is causing the other. This is one of the most important things we have to remember when we're doing correlational research. Correlation alone does not imply causation. In this comic, we see a little boy sitting on a plane. He turns to his mother and says, I wish they didn't turn on that seatbelt sign so much. Every time they do, it gets bumpy. Now this little boy is a great scientist because he is noticing that when one thing changes in his environment, something else always follows. He is learning cause and effect thinking. We can't fault him at all for thinking that turning on the seatbelt sign causes the turbulence. However, the reason why this is funny is because we know that both the turning on of the seatbelt sign and the turbulence is caused by a third variable. This is why correlation does not imply causation. There may be a third variable at play that explains the relationship between the first two variables. Another thing that we cannot determine simply from correlation is the direction of causality. Even if there is a causal link between variables, we can't determine which variable is causing the other to change. Now, if you have dogs, one unpleasant side effect is sometimes when the dog isn't feeling well, the dog throws up and often you'll see grass. Sometimes you'll see a dog eating grass. Is it the grass that's causing the dog to throw up? Or is it that when the dog feels like it's getting nauseous, it tries to feel better by eating the grass? That's what I mean about direction of causality. Which one is causing the other? We can't tell. Even though these variables are correlated, consistently related, we can't determine which one is causing the other. Another example would be as the number of bars in a community increases, there is an increase in the number of churches. Well, what explains that relationship? Is it that in a community with all those sinners, we need more churches? Another plausible explanation could be that all those religious people could drive you to drink. The fact is that both of these observations are driven by a third variable. In a community with more churches or more bars, you have more people. Population explains why you have more or fewer of each. Therefore, we can't assume that one is causing the other. Let me then summarize what we need to know about the relationship between correlation and causation. As I've told you, correlation does not imply causation. Just because a correlation exists does not mean that there is a cause and effect relationship between the variables. On the other hand, causation does imply correlation. If you're trying to make the case that a certain intervention necessarily causes an outcome, those two variables will be correlated. If the variables do not correlate, you can be sure that one variable is not causal of the other. Although correlation does not imply causation, correlation does not preclude causation. What I mean is that correlation can suggest 
when causation exists. If one variable is causing the other to change, they should be correlated. And the absence of the correlation does suggest that there is no causation. I've heard researchers try to explain away inconvenient results by saying it's just correlational. For instance, in states with the highest amount of abstinence-based sex education, they also have the highest amounts of teen pregnancy. If the sex education was decreasing teen pregnancy, we should see an inverse correlation. Researchers said, ah, oh, it's just correlational. Yes, it is correlational. However, if there was causation, that is not the correlation that we should see. The presence of a correlation does not imply that there is causation. However, the absence of a correlation strongly suggests that there is not causation.